so today we are discussing the fundamental uh, things in statistical mechanics that we have to understand is the statistical ensembles right so I will start from a very basic that we all know that in the formulation of statistical mechanics Gibbs introduced three standard ensembles to which real experiments could be approximated these are the first one is the micro canonical ensemble the second one is the canonical ensemble and the third one is the grand canonical ensemble their classification depends on the manner in which their systems interact each of them has its own characteristics distribution physical systems can interact in a variety of ways in particular they may exchange energy or matter or both energy and matter with each other the ensemble in which the systems exchange energy but not matter is called a canonical ensemble that in which both energy and matter are exchanged between the systems is called a grand canonical ensemble and that in which neither energy nor matter is exchanged is called a micro canonical ensemble so statistical mechanics provides a number of methods for calculating equilibrium thermodynamic properties of macroscopic systems explicit calculations of thermodynamics functions can be carried out using micro canonical canonical or grand canonical ensembles a specific choice of ensembles may be thought of as corresponding to a particular physical situation right so we are emphasizing the micro canonical ensemble this ensemble consists of systems which are isolated from the rest of the world such a system is also known as a closed isolated system and has a fixed volume fixed total energy and a fixed total number of particles the probability density p which is a function of p and q the generalized momenta and coordinates of such a system differs from zero only on the constant energy hypersurface it must be noted however that in reality one cannot achieve complete isolation of a system we must allow for some interaction energy del e though very small the elements of the micro canonical ensemble therefore lie within the range between e and e plus del e the picture of a micro canonical distribution in phase space would be something like a very thin uniform cloud one can easily see this by the picture shown which gives the trajectory of a simple harmonic oscillator the ellipse e represents the evolution of our conservative system with total energy e this system is just one member of the ensemble the other members may have energy between e plus delta e and hence their corresponding phase points will be between two ellipses the thin elliptic cloud is the energy shell if we conceive of delta e as getting smaller and smaller the energy shell between the two surfaces would become just a surface in the limit as delta e tending to zero according to the fundamental postulate of equal a priori probability under the condition of equilibrium 
द सिस्टम इज इक्वली लाइकली टू बी फाउंड इन वन ऑफ इट्स एक्सेसिबल स्टेट्स इन द केस ऑफ माइक्रो कैनोनिकल एनसेम्बल ऑल स्टेट्स बिटवीन ई एंड ई प्लस डेल्टा ई आर इक्वली एक्सेसिबल देर फोर इफ द सिस्टेम इज इन अ स्टेट एक्स कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग टू द एनर्जी ई एक्स द प्रोबिलिटी पी एक्स ऑफ फाइंडिंग द सिस्टेम इन स्टेट एक्स इज गिवेन बाई पी एक्स इज इक्वल्स टू सी इफ माई ई एक्स लाइज बिटवीन ई एंड ई प्लस डेल्टा ई एंड जीरो अदरवाइज वेर सी इज ए कॉन्स्टेंट द वैल्यू ऑफ विच कैन बी डिटर्मिंड फ्रॉम द नॉर्मलाइजेशन कंडीशन साम ओवर पी एक्स इज इक्वल्स टू वन वेन साम ओवर ऑल एक्सेसिबल स्टेट्स इन द रेंज बिटवीन ई एन ई प्लस डेल ई इट शुड बी मोर एप्रोप्रिएट टू राइट दिस रिलेशन एज पी एक्स इज इक्वल्स टू कॉन्स्टेंट सी डेल्टा ई माइनस ई एक्स वेर डेल्टा इज द डिडक्ट डेल्टा फंक्शन I repeat, we can approximate the probability p x is equals to c times delta function e minus e x. If one can illustrate the isolated paramagnet, which is the example of the micro canonical ensemble, so we can discuss the number of states and probabilities here. When one is trying to determine the ensemble. to decide on the occurrence rates of the distinct microscopic states of a system it is vital to take into account the strict constraints right so it is clear for example that if a gas is in a sealed vessel the time evolution of the system will not res- result in the appearance of states in which molecules are found outside the vessel similarly all conservation laws must apply to the states of the ensemble the first conservation law which comes to mind is the conservation of energy of an isolated system clearly the trajectory of an isolated system will contain only states whose energy is equal to the initial energy taking into account the conservation laws and the external constraints applied to the system it is natural to assume in the absence of other information that all the states are equally probable one may ask of course how it is possible for the paramagnetic system to pass from one state to another and not remain in a single microscopic state if the spins do not affect one another the answer is that there are necessarily interactions between the different spins but that these involve energies that are very small compared to the energy of the moments in the magnetic field nevertheless since we are dealing with many states of the same energy even a small perturbation can in the quantum description transfer the energy from state to state from fine with finite probability thus it is reasonable to treat the problem as if the energy are given by a quantity and the system's trajectory in the space of microscopic states passes through all of the allowed states moreover we shall interpret the state of thermal equilibrium as a state to which the system has evolved after a long enough time so that by now all the microscopic states appear at the same occurrence rate during its time evolution this collection of states corresponds to a microscopic or macroscopic state the ensemble we define of constant energy is called a micro canonical ensemble or there is no point in trying to find a deep meaning to this name in such an ensemble if the energy is e 
the probability for a certain microscopic state is simply 1 upon tau e where tau e is the number of states with energy e namely for our paramagnet p which is a function of spins if sigma 1 to sigma n are the spins of the system then p is a function of sigma 1 sigma 2 dot 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 up to sigma n is equals to 1 upon tau e up to this point the considerations are of universal generality to say more about tau e we turn to the simple model of the paramagnet the model is so simple that it is possible to answer this question in detail using combinatorial considerations the energy of the state depends on the difference between the number of spins that point along the field n plus and those that point in the opposite direction n minus denoting this difference by small q namely small q is equals to n plus minus n minus we obtain energy e is equals to minus mu b times h times q which means that the constant energy e is equivalent to constant q however since the sum of n plus and n minus is also constant and equal to the total number of spins constant q means that both n minus and n plus are constant but we can immediately write down the number of states with given n minus and n plus since this is simply the number of ways of dividing n objects into two groups n plus in one and n minus in the other that is tau of e is equals to simply n factorial divided by n plus factorial times n minus factorial if we understood the concept behind writing the probability as well as the tau then we quickly move on how to calculate the averages and correlations to establish certain relations for paramagnetism the first calculation we can perform is of the average magnetization this is an especially simple calculation since in all the states of equal energy the magnetization is identical hence m average is equals to mu b times q which is minus e upon h and the average magnetization per degree of freedom or spin is simply mu b q divided by n or minus e divided by n h next we calculate probability of the spin sigma 1 which is defined by some other equations as the probability for spin number one to have a projection sigma one along the field we start with sigma one is equals to one that is we calculate p where sigma one is equals to one and will be verified by the calculation the result is independent of our choice of spin i is equals to one we carry out the summation with p as a function of sigma 1 to sigma n given by 1 upon tau e since the probabilities are all equal the problem reduces to finding the number of microscopic states with given q for which sigma 1 is equals to plus 1 we have to calculate the number of states of the remaining n minus 1 spins which an excess n plus minus n minus along plus z equal to q minus 1 in other words these are the states with n minus spins along minus z as in the calculation of tau e but with only n plus minus 1 along z this number is n minus 1 factorial divided by n plus minus 1 factorial times n minus factorial so that p for sigma 1 is equals to plus 1 spin 
turns out to be n minus 1 factorial divided by n plus minus 1 factorial times n minus factorial times 1 upon tau e that is turns out to be n plus divided by n which is half minus e by n over 2 mu b h the answer indicates that we could have calculated p sigma 1 is equals to 1 in a simpler way the probability for spin 1 to have projection plus 1 is equal to the probability for any one of other spins to have projection plus 1 thus the required probability is also equal to the probability for an arbitrary spin to have projection plus 1 and is of course equal to the ratio of the number of spins with projection plus 1 and their total number n plus divided by n now depending upon the probabilities we are now discussing a very important problem the problem states a system of four particles has energy levels with energy 0 1 2 3 units the total energy of the system is 3 units list the accessible microstates if the particles are number 1 indistinguishable and number 2 distinguishable so we shall discuss the following three questions the first one is what is the probability of finding a particle with a given energy how many available energy states are in a system counting the states as a function of energy and finally the occupation number or how many particles in a particular energy state eventually we will ask how indistinguishable particles are statistically distributed over the same quantized energies so one can apply the probability arguments that describe coin flips and card peaks to a physical system and also one can learn how indistinguishable particles or distinguishable particles are statistically distributed in energy for systems with quantized energy levels we all know from the maxwell boltzmann factor the probability of finding a particle with a given energy one can define the system as n is equals to four distinguishable particles right uh, and equally spaced energies suppose 0 epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon and 3 epsilon and the allowed energies are not quantized are now quantized add fixed amount of energy say e total is equals to 3 epsilon that is given in the problem so if n1 is the number of particles with energies epsilon 1 etc so how many available states does the system for uh, have a fixed total energy of 3 epsilon so two constraints here one is e total is a function of n1 n2 n3 and n4 is equals to summation over r nr epsilon r is equals to 3 epsilon and capital n is equals to summation upon r nr is equals to 4 so these are the all possible states for a given fixed energy of e total is equals to 3 epsilon only three states are possible right so these are the all possible states for a fixed energy of e total is equals to 3 epsilon the three particles can accommodate in the lowest energy level that is 0 epsilon and 1 in the 3 epsilon 
the next possible is the two of the balls or particles can sit in the lowest energy level that is zero epsilon one in one epsilon energy level and one is two epsilon energy level and another combination is possible for which one sits in the lowest energy level that is zero epsilon and three sits in the first energy level that is one epsilon all of which three are only possibility for which the total energy becomes three epsilon for four distinguishable particles indistinguishable particles so only three states are possible so as the particles are distinguishable we have the formula of n n is equals to n factorial divided by small n factorial times n minus small n factorial so these are the table for which equal equally spaced energy levels of four distinguishable particles total energy fixed at e total is equals to 3 epsilon so for the microstates a for which three seats in 0 epsilon one seats in 3 epsilon the total energy is 3 epsilon so the microstates w or ge becomes 4 1 that turns out to be 4 the next one is for microstate named B where two seats in that 0 epsilon, one seats in 1 epsilon and one in 2 epsilon. The total energy becomes 3 epsilon and the possibility becomes 4 1 times 3 1 that is 12. And for the last one for microstate named C where one seats in 0 epsilon, three seats in 1 epsilon the total energy becomes 3 epsilon and the possibility or the distribution becomes 4 1 that is 4 so hence 4 plus 12 plus 4 is equals to 20 possibilities or rather uh, there are 20 microstates for the given problem right so this is how one can solve uh, this type of problems using the uh, combinatorial uh, mechanism for distinguishable and indistinguishable particles